<laughs> we are going live here. There we are. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to our podcast slash live event. Um, today we are joined with Henry, Chef, Chef Healthy Henry, and he's going to be doing some spring recipes. You guys, I'm so excited. Like these recipes are amazing. I have a preview. I've gotten a preview of them. I've actually watched, we have, we have three amazing ones. He's going to do a demonstration. Um, he's pre-recorded it. So each of them will be um, available after this event. And then he has recipe cards alongside them. So um, it looks like we have Guadalupe, Arce, Darla, Dulce, um, Nancy, Cassandra, Suzanne. Um, looks like we have all kinds of people joining us. I'm actually getting, going to um, just kind of um, log on to our Facebook page and see who all we have registered there. I want to welcome all different groups. We have lots of surgical groups that are joining us. We have Dr. Haja group, Dr. Um, we have a new group, Bridges um, from Virginia um, community joining. We have Berry Nation community joining us. Um, nice. Yeah, we have we have all different kinds of communities. So I want to say hello. Tell us where you're from. If you're in the if you're in the chat box, tell us where you learned about these events. Um, love to know what community you're coming from. Um, also, Chi Health. Forgot about Chi. I love Chi. They're they joined a lot of our events. So um, welcome, welcome. Or maybe you're just a pro care listener, or maybe you're ha you're um, a part of Henry's community because Henry yeah. has his own community as well. Um, so let us know. And Henry, while they're doing that, I'm gonna um, log on to Facebook. So I'm gonna mute myself for okay. just a moment, okay? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me because last time we couldn't, someone couldn't hear me or whatever. So I just want to make sure that um, we're we're good with that. So let me know if you can't. Um, so, uh, my name's, uh, Henry Baker, chef, healthy, Henry. I do, I create, um, uh, healthy recipes for people who have bariatric surgery. Um, but they're really, um, recipes that people sh in everywhere should be eating because they're super healthy and super nice, good, high fiber, high protein, very low sugar, very low carb, the whole thing. Um, and so I enjoy it. I put them out there. I share them with everybody. I, I create the videos on my website, on my YouTube, and of course on Instagram. So I'm excited to uh, bring these recipes with you, but at the same time, now that we're sh shifting to spring, I'm gonna start doing more of uh, like springtime salads with some with like fish kind of thing, kind of like on that Mediterranean side where it's more fresh vegetables, uh, fresh fish, and then do some stuff with some, some fruits. I've got some stuff coming on and I got a really good Easter one that I'm, that I'm planning out for Easter for my family. So. I'll put that out there probably next week because I'm working on that one this week. Okay, I'm going to unmute myself. We have on Facebook, we have Stephanie from Pennsylvania and we have Terry and Nicole. Welcome to all of them. It looks like we have, as far as comments here, um, looks like Darla's from Omaha, Sally's from Berry Nation. Arce, I hope I'm pronouncing right, Cuba. I live in Council Bluffs, um, IA, I guess that's Iowa. And Jason's Omaha, Kim's um, North Carolina. So all over the place. Yeah, nice. So happy to have you guys. And I want to tell you also that this event is, is recorded. So if at any point you have to jump off, we understand lives are busy. It is kind of over lunch. So this event may go about an hour. Um, so if you have to jump off and you want to come back and, and listen, you know, you also can download the Crowdcast app on your phone and um, have that available so that you can listen to it while you walk or do whatever, you know, while you're in your car driving, that type of thing. So just another little place to listen in. Um, we are live on Facebook too. So I want to say hi to our Facebook people there. Hey, Facebook. Um, Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello on ProCare Health's channel. Um, also, big announcement, big, big announcement. So for all of you guys listening, we are going to be um, starting a brand new platform in May, and we're going to be moving over to Zoom. We're hoping that that'll help conquer some of the technical issues that we've been having, people having problems signing on, all that craziness. Um, 
while we have loved this platform, we are looking at doing that. So please stay tuned. We'll be giving more information as soon as we have it. Um, I just got access to our Zoom account yesterday and started playing around with it. Um, Henry and I was talking because Henry, Henry, tell like, let's start start in kind of telling you, talk, telling a little bit more about um, kind of the things that you're interested in doing besides these events, like, and, and also kind of some of the things you're going to be doing coming up, because I know you have a lot of events coming up, too. Yeah, so, um, so my, my, obviously, like I said, my, my goal is to get these, you know, recipes, get this food out to everybody so they can eat healthier, so they don't get to, so they can avoid the regain, and so they can, like, get to be the best, healthiest person for them and their families, and hopefully at some, at some point, you know, just try to get their families, you know, and, and themselves into, interested in cooking, because, um, that's where it really starts. It starts from the family. Um, my goal is to do some traveling, traveling to people's homes, teaching them how to cook in their house using their utensils, their pots and pans. So when I leave, they can do it. It's a program. It's a, it's a system where I can come to your house for a day. We go shopping, get to learn what you're looking for, what you like to eat, what you like, what kind of foods, whatever. And then we plan a plan a day of cooking and just cook. And whether it's for you and your family, which would be very welcome because you know my daughter my taught taught my daughter how to cook when she's very young. She's you know a great cooker. She cook um she cook great cook and she's up in LA right now and so she's doing her own thing up there. So um but it's essential for us to get healthy. Once we get healthy, um we have to then try to uh, extend that healthiness to our kids to eat well, eat right, you know, learn how to you know pick out the right produce, learn how to cook it and learn learn how to enjoy it and really you know, just enjoy the whole process because once they're involved and once you sit down at a table with your family, it, you have more of an investment in that meal as opposed to, you know, mom or dad cooking it and then the kids sit down and they're like, I don't want this. But if they're involved, they have some, they have a, more of an interest in that. Um, so with that said, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be doing, going to New Orleans for a WSFA. I'll be doing a cooking demo there and I'm going to do kind of a, um, like a, <laughs> Kind of a prototype of what I'm looking for. So, um, kind of state, Connie Stapleton is going to be doing um, <clears throat> my demo with me, and we're going to do it as if I'm at her house and I'm teaching her how to cook. And we're doing it like if I was at, let's say, for example, Mar uh, Marie's house. We're at Marie's house. Connie's going to be Marie. And so she's going to say, you know, this is my home. Henry's here. He's going to come teach me how to cook. And so we're going to do like a little, it's not like a skit, it's kind of just like a deal where um, I'm going to show her how to cook. And it's going to be a really fun, um, interactive um, experience. So I'm going to be doing that. And then um, in then I'll be going to San Antonio for the branch retreat. And then um, Connie and I are putting together a uh, men's, men's retreat in August. So, um, you know, look for that too. But uh, I'm getting around I'm trying to uh, get everybody, you know, on the, on the cooking thing, because I mean, eating is eating is um, part of it, like that, obviously, the mental, emotional, and the eating and I mean the food and the, the nutrition, but the thing is the interest in this stuff is what really drives it. If you really find ways to find interest in the cooking part and really streamline the cutting and the preparing and all that kind of thing, it would go really quickly. And that's my job is teach you, teach you how to streamline everything. So, you know, a two hour meal can only take, you know, 30 to 45 minutes meal and then saves you time and you show and you, you know, seems better for you. That's, that's what I got going on. <laughs> Yeah, no, Henry, that's that's amazing. I just posted the link for the WLSFA event in case they want to join you or see you. I'll be there with yeah. Henry too. Um, and I'm also going to post the um, at the Bariatric Society retreat, and that's in San Antonio. I'll post the link for that on both Facebook and here. Yeah, um, post a link to that. I'm on com on the committee, so definitely like you know let you know let me know if you're going to go, and I can uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. No, that's I mean that's that's wonderful, and we're going to be sharing too how to get a hold of Henry too more here in just a little bit. But for now, he does have a, a website, Chef Healthy Henry, um, and um, on that website, do you have your contact information on there? If we'll be adding yeah. that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you can you can contact me. Every all my handles are basically Chef Healthy Henry. You can DM me on, on Instagram. You can I mean you can find me on YouTube. But yeah, my website's got all my contact information too for sure. 
Okay, perfect. I am adding it here on Facebook. So I'm sorry if I look like I'm, I am multitasking. It's just a tad bit, just to make sure. Well, you do a good job at it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hundred screens open here. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's get started because I want to make sure to be able to share all this wonderful information. Yeah, sure. um, the first recipe that we're going to be sharing, um, and I want to also just say, Henry and Connie that he was talking about earlier just did a live event together. It's on um, Henry's Instagram, I think. And it's also on Connie yeah. Stapleton's. Mm -hmm. It's on their YouTube channels. Check that out. Um, I was like excited because it's kind of like a little two-part thing. And um, Henry, I have to say some of the most minute things that probably seem so simple to you. I think I told you this, but it's like how to hold your knife. Yeah. Like how to like the simple, how to cut a sweet potato. Like these are things we have to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like, yeah, these are know. techniques. That... Like it sounds silly. Or how to cut an onion. How to cut, you know, just I mean, we know we all have our ways of doing these things. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull so, up the very first one. Now, Henry, how about we pull up the YouTube video first and then okay. we pull up the recipe card? And you can okay, kind of go through fine. it that way. Yeah. Does that sound like a deal or would you rather do it vice yeah. versa? No, no, that's totally cool. Cool. Yeah. So we put together these three videos. I put together these three videos, sent it to you guys. Um, and so you guys watch the video and if you have any questions during or after each video, let me know and we, we can talk about it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to share my screen and I am going to pop on the very first one, which is the lentil pasta with tofu and vegetables. Okay. okay. And I'm going to share the audio. Okay. And I'm going to make this big. Oh, there I am. Yep, there you are. And I am going okay. to turn up my In my kitchen, I'm a little, it's a little crooked, but it's okay. <laughs> I may have to adjust the volume, but I'll go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and press play, if that's okay, Henry. Okay. You'll still be able to hear yeah. us. Guys, this video here is about nine minutes. The other two are about six. So stay with us. And, and if you have something you want to say, type it in the chat box if you have questions while he's he's doing and then we'll be having, having a little conversation after. Yeah, for sure. Can we hear it? Brenda. Ah. Hey. Okay, I'm gonna pause it because somebody's saying there's no sound. Is that correct? Yeah, I can't hear it either. Okay, let me go back. Um, stop sharing. Okay, I'm gonna try a different way of doing that so that we can try. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. Green. Okay, so maybe if I share my entire screen and then I say share system audio. Okay, I'm going to try a different way. Let me know immediately if you can't hear me. Okay. Okay. I'm going to kind of back up just a tiny bit. Hear it? No. Hmm. Can you hear it, Henry? No, I can't hear it either. Sorry. Hmm. It says it's sharing my screen and audio. Okay. Well, we can, well, we can, I mean, I guess we could just do the, the recipe cards. We could talk about it and then they can, you know, find on YouTube, I guess. I mean, or right, Henry, I can, what I can do is let you talk. You're, they should be able to hear you and you could kind of talk through it if you want. Um, yeah, we can do that. I'm just trying to see if there's a, another way to do it but yeah <laughs> okay 
I'm like looking to see if I have, it's, it's saying that it's sharing audio. So it's kind of like, I'm not really sure. Can you hear it when it's, when it's playing? Can you hear it? I can, but it doesn't matter if I can hear it. <laughs> no. How about I let you, let, let's see if you can talk, do a talk over. You want to just do that okay. and just kind of talk over? We can try that. Yeah, okay. we can try that. And then you can And let's see if people can I... hear. Can you see the chat box? Maybe if you touch the icon next to it, pause and play the video, which is like a horn, it will let you increase the volume. It may be. So we can try that. Okay. Let's try that once over. And then if not, I'll have you try to do a talk over with it. Okay. Okay. Let's try the Windows version. I'm going to try that. Whoops. Cancel. That's a bit of a challenge. We'll get it figured out. We've done it before, so I know it's possible to be able to hear. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to turn mine down just a little bit so that I can hear you, Henry. And let me see if there's okay. another icon. Sound output. It's letting me, I'm going to try doing it. And I'm looking for the little icon. Can you hear that? No. Okay. See if you want to do a, 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 a talk over then, Henry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, um, I don't have the recipe and card in front of me, but um, okay. So <clears throat> we're just so basically we're starting off by we're going to um, we're we're cutting the tofu obviously, and then we're going to uh, we're going to cook up the, the tofu on a dry heat, so we don't use mm -hmm. any um, any kind of oil. So it's you know it's no more natural. So just enough to get it brown on the outside, and then. Uh, just still soft on the inside, and then we'll put that off to the side. And then, um, so right now I'm I'm just basically drying everything off. So as so you cut it, you dry everything off because once you get in the pan, the drier the better. Um, so you know you can see at the forefront I have my my the stuff for my um, sort of the sauce. Um, and I and you in there I usually put um, use honey instead of straight sugar when I'm when I'm doing any kind of like flavorings that kind of thing. Um, and then what are we doing here? I wish I can have that sound because I don't have like in front of me, but let me see here. Let me see if I can full screen my thing. All right. All right. So that's the honey going into the jar. And this video again is on YouTube, so you can hear the whole thing. But it's um, basically a lot of the Asian flavors, some some uh, red wine vinegar. I'm not, I'm some, yeah, and some uh, the honey. Um, a little bit of the um, garlic sauce, like garlic sauce, so um, spicy chili garlic sauce, and some soy sauce, and I'm gonna put that in a jar and shake it up. All the time, you can see on the on the right side, the tofu is still uh, drying out. So we'll do get a little bit of shake, and then your sauce is basically done. So nice and easy. Um, these are. Um, so we'll do get that done. This is uh, this is the videos that I usually do in my kitchen. Um, typically we, um, you know, I, I set all my cameras up, get this stuff going at my, you know, different angles. And then I'm talking, we're going to say, I'm, we're going to clear everything up and we're going to get the pan out. We're going to start, uh, cooking up this, the tofu there. Um, so we're going to put that in, like I said, so it is a dry pan, so you don't have to use oil. So it's more natural and more, more healthy. Um, and this is just going to, we're just going to, you know, dry this, you know, kind of cook this up, let it. Let it go for a while. Uh, we're gonna flip them over. This is probably takes the longest part of the tofu, but while the tofu is cooking, you can like still cook everything else on the other side, which I'll do in a second. Um, but the tofu itself, we just let it go. A couple minutes after a couple minutes, we flip them over, and and uh, so and they'll you'll see. This usually it takes about that process. Usually takes about seven to eight minutes. Okay. So then we're gonna get the vegetables going on the other side. Um, so I do have this. This nice burner that I have on my island there that is super nice because it's uh, very convenient. Um, so you can see that was only a couple minutes and already we're, we're like, you know, already getting brown. 
Um, with that said, some of this is editing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, so then we're gonna bring over the vegetables. I love color. I love, I mean, when I cook, I do like to do, especially when I plate, I do a lot of color, and I do a lot of height. So I try to get as much color as possible. So I have my garlic in there. I have some Asian eggplant in, I mean, Asian um, uh, zucchini there, um, some tomato and some, uh, some pepper in there too. So uh, we're gonna put the uh, garlic, in, I mean, the, putting in the uh, zucchini in there first, get that going, get that nice and softened. Um, and then just let that go. My hair is a little longer there. I just got my hair cut, so. <laughs> <laughs> It looks so good. This is a great recipe okay. coming up too, because zucchini, there's always like lots of questions about what to do with zucchini in the summer. Yeah, I love zucchini um, and sweet potatoes are always a question like, you know, how, how, how can we get more sweet, sweet potatoes into our diet kind of thing. So I do a lot of that. Um, but uh, so there's um, the zucchinis there. We're putting in some red onion and um, red pepper in there, uh, like sweet red pepper. Um, just kind of give that a little mix. And all the time you see on the left side, the, the tofu is still cooking still getting brown on each side, but and so I, you know, you got to flip on, on, you know, front side, the back side, the sides and different things. So get my flipping going. Hey Henry, can you substitute, like if you're not, cause I've never tried tofu. I'm not saying I'm yeah. close to it, but could you substitute that for anything else in this recipe? Yeah. In this recipe, you can substitute it, substitute it for different types of different types of proteins. Um, I would do, uh, the way it comes out, I would do not a flaky fish, more of a meatier fish. If you want to do like a fish kind of deal, um, you could probably do um, some type of like you know, uh, shredded chicken with with it too. Um, it's just that the way everything is cut, and that's the other thing is is that, is that like <clears throat> everything has got to cut be cut depending on what your recipe is. If you're looking at a recipe that's like this is your main menu, you're going to cut everything a little, little bigger. You're going to dice them a little bigger. And if you're doing a small, like if it's just a side thing, you'll see later. If it's just a side thing, you just like you cut them sl smaller, so they're easier. They're like smaller bites, kind of thing. Um, but the tofu went went really good with this, just because everything was the 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 flavors were good. But then everything was in uniform too, as far as everything, you know that whole thing. So now I'm adding a little bit of cilantro on there in there. Um, so this is going to get cooked up really nicely, um, and some salt. Um, and then <clears throat> get that going. And so the tofu is almost done. So you'll see that I'll, be, I'll pull the tofu off pretty soon here. Um, yeah, so, and then we're getting some, now we're gonna bring in the uh, our dressing. And so we're gonna add the dressing to our sauce, whatever, to the vegetables. And once the vegetables are done and the sauce is done, I'm gonna take the tofu and put it right in there and Give a little garnish to it and it'll be done so it's super easy super nice and uh you know um a good like tuesday night menu a re you know menu for sure and these are the kind of things that you can you can like you know involve your family with you know can help you can help them like sort out the different types of you know vegetables and you know someone could pour some pour, put like one in and whatever kind of deal so okay so i got that um <clears throat> In there, put the put a little bit of sauce. You don't have to put the whole sauce in because you want to taste it first. You want to taste everything. All make sure all flavors are fine. And then, if you if you're okay with that, then you can put the rest of the sauce on the table. And so individual people can add more sauce sauce if they actually wanted to. But typically, you know, you put like part of it in there and then give it a, give it a taste. Hey Henry, so what is the sauce again? The sauce, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> it's. Um, I'm trying to think here. It's um, some rice vinegar, some soy sauce, some chili garlic sauce, um, and then um, what happened? There, okay. sorry about that. So, and this, these, by the way, uh, these noodles are lentil noodles. So, so they're easy. They're um, healthier for you. They have more fiber, and they have you know some more, a little bit more protein and complex carbs. So, they're not the simple carbs. So, this is. The, like I said, just a little bit more sauce on there. It's nice and easy. I got my little Asian bowl out for this, for this occasion. Um, top it with, with some more cilantro there and that's super easy. Yeah, we can um, put the link, YouTube link to in the chat if you, you can do that, right, Absolutely. Brenda? I okay. will definitely do that. Yeah. Are we, are we, is this video pretty much, we're right yeah. towards the end. Do you want me to stop? Yeah, this video is done. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, this is just my, 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 
my, uh, you know, closing kind of thing where I'm saying, you know, super nice, super easy, love it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, okay. That, there's a couple questions here. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gina says, is this class we get credit for? So Gina, um, I'm going to um, put my email in the chat box. And if you need me to send your participation to a program, send me an email. Um, typically, I do this with support groups. I send the facility support groups um, information, which those are once a month. But these live events, I'm always happy to count them as a support group. So if you're wanting that credit for attendance, please let just send me an email. Wow. Um, Letitia says, can you place the YouTube? I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And while I'm doing that, Henry, I'm going to pull up the recipe card and let you kind of like talk them through the recipe card just a little bit. If that's, so, okay. I'll put that up. <clears throat> and while you're doing that, so like when she puts the YouTube link up there, you'll see, so this is part of a three, res three uh, recipe menu. So there's three other, th these other three that we're doing based, well, no, actually, I think there's these, this is just an Asian one. We're, we're doing some different ones, but in there, in the body, there's links to the other two recipes that go with this as a dinner. So this is, um, this is the one you just did, the lentil pasta with tofu and vegetables. Yeah. And I'm going to page so down here to the recipe, the actual ingredients. So I don't know yeah. if you just want to go over ingredients or what you'd like to do. I'll kind of leave that piece up to you. Well, it's a little small. I can't really read it. Can you make it a little bigger now? <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, here. Okay. So okay. So the tofu and the lentils. Okay. So again, the that the sauce is the soy sauce, the honey, the water, the white wine vinegar, and the chili garlic sauce. You mix that up with the in the jar. That's the easiest way to mix it up. You don't even have to put it in a bowl. You know, whatever. Um, and then the um, the vegetables itself, I mean, there's there's very simple ones. Like I said, I like to do a lot of colors. I'll color. I'll do different types of different peppers, um, and then I'll um, you know just cut and cut all those up. Yeah, you your tomatoes, and uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's a very simple one. I love this sauce too because I love. I guess this would be kind of you consider would you consider it like an Asian dish with the soy sauce, yeah. the honey, the white mm -hmm. wine vinegar. Um, I love that that sauce, the the um, sound of what that would taste like. So, yeah. Um, is there anything else, Henry, on this recipe card that you'd like for me to page up or down or just kind of? Um, no, I just I guess there's just a couple of things to add. Is that with the chili garlic sauce, if you like if you like spice, you know, add, you know, you can. The recipes are there as guides, so you can customize it to you or and or your family's liking. So. If with the chili garlic sauce, if it's too much for you, if it's too, if you like, if you don't like a lot of, a lot of um, heat to it, don't put as much in or leave it out. I mean, you could put a little bit in just for the flavoring, but it's not that, not that much. But if you like a lot more heat, then put more chili garlic sauce in there, or you can add, you know, maybe like a jalapeno pepper or even like a, like a Thai chili or something like that if you like more heat. But um, like I said, these are all just guidelines for you to customize it to your liking. And that's all really cooking is all about. And really, too, you know, open up your refrigerator, open up your cupboard, see what you got. You can always add in extra stuff. I would say um, maybe some yellow squash might be good. Some, um, how about the, on Facebook, there's a question, Henry. Um, Leary says, if you want to switch out the tofu for the chicken, what kind of chicken do you recommend? Thighs, breast, what would you mm -hmm. say? Um, typically I would do with, for this one, I would probably do a, um, a thigh just because it's got more flavor and it's going to, it's going to add that flavor in there. Like it's the thing about breasts, um, especially like, cause it's all white meat. It's, it's nice. It's, it's, it's very helpful. I mean, healthy, but there's not as much flavor to add to your dish. And so when you add something, typically you want to add something that's going to add <clears throat> that's going to complement the dish <clears throat> and or add something to the dish where the the chicken breast has more flavor and it's going to add more to the fish and, fish and complement the dish itself for sure. And I know this formatting is off a little bit. I just posted the links to the recipe card and the YouTube video for the lentil pasta with tofu. There is another question here. Um, Cassandra says, would you recommend putting oyster sauce and green onions? Yeah, you could definitely do that. Add some oyster sauce. The green onions are great. Um, I used to do a lot of green onions. 
um, especially at the end with the garnish, you do the, the green part of the green onions to really bring out that, that, that flavor for sure. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? We can go, if not, we can go to the next one. I just posted on face, or Facebook as well, the links. Okay. So that people have those. Um, the YouTube video and the recipe card. And we are gonna go ahead and share the next one. I can try it again. We'll try it with audio and see if it works. Okay. If not, we'll just do the try same. It one time. Um, people on Facebook were also saying that they could hear you. So they could. Okay, good. They could. They can hear the talk. <clears throat> they can hear the so that's why I kind of muted myself where I couldn't hear the video in you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again. Whoops. Okay. I didn't mean to turn my camera. There we go. Share. Green. You know what? Let me try something different. Let me press share video. Maybe that will make a difference. Um, I think I'm frozen. Please ask everyone on stage to use headphones when sharing a video. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to copy the video link. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I, my picture's frozen. Sorry, Henry. I'm gonna I'm gonna try sharing it a different way. That's why it was freezing. But I'm gonna try okay. it a different way, and we'll see if this works. Okay. Okay. It may mute. Let's see. Oh, okay. Well, I'm frozen. So <laughs> as long as okay, hey, we're back and moving on to our third yeah, recipe: the all, yeah. uh, broccoli and bok choy. Uh, vegetable mix. Okay, so what, is, so what, what we're going to do is first we're going to add a little bit of our oil here to our pan here and this is going to oh, be a pan it. that we're can going you? to make. Uh... Can you guys hear the video this time? I can. Yeah. You can. Okay. Anybody else hear the video not hear the video this time? Yes. It looks like everybody's Oh good. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and press play. We're going to caramelize our uh, caramelize some onions, so we put that in our pan too. So we'll caramelize our onions in our small pan here, and we just put the little red onions in there. Just a little bit, a touch of sugar, just to get them going. Nice little flip, and those are just going to go for a while and get all caramelized and. I'm pausing it for a second because there is a few people that says that they cannot hear it, which is crazy because other people say they can. <laughs> so mm. I have no idea. Try refreshing. Yeah, try refreshing your screen. Let us know if you can hear it then. If not, we'll turn off the sound and we'll um, let Henry talk, but we're going to try that. Take them up just a little bit. All right. So like I said before, I did the other recipe with the uh, smaller dice. So for the vegetables, go with the lentils because that's more of a side dish. Okay, let's do this nice little flip while we're talking. And these are going to, this is going to be more of the main dish. So this is going to be more of a higher, I mean, a, like a bigger dice. So we're going to, from here we have some um, a garlic. And we're going to add some uh, ginger. Let that go for just a little bit there. I love ginger. It's great to put our vegetables. Ready. Let that cook down. And then we got some cabbage here and some bok choy, some broccoli, some uh, orange pepper. And um, so with the bok choy, what I did is I separated the leaves from the stems. So the stems are going to go in first because they're going to take a little bit longer to, to cook. Everything else is going to go in, and we're going to start making, start making, start making. And right at the very end, we'll put the leaves in, the bok choy leaves in, along with our lime to kind of get it going. And then by that time, everything is all nice and down, then the, the um, leaves will be cooked, cooked too. And so these will be, these are still going, these are looking good. Okay, so these are going, so now we're going to add our broccoli. And we're just going to saute this broccoli up, you know. Now you notice we got the bigger pan out because we're going to have lots of vegetables to put in here. So we'll put the broccoli in and then we'll add our the bok choy, the stem, the stem part. So take that one out. All right. <laughs> I'm 
going to be mixed really well. All right, we'll add our orange pepper. I like to get everything nice and colorful, so try to get as much color as possible. Get that mixed in. And just let that sit for a while and do its thing while this is doing its thing too. All right. Another flip over here. Another flip over here. These are getting going. You can feel them softening up now. Add our cabbage in, nice and color. I like the color, so the pot's going to get nice and filled. So that's okay because everything's going to cook down anyway. So we we'll add a little bit of soy sauce here. Let that go. All right, and then add our salt. And we're just going to let this saute for a while. It's going to take a little while, but we're going to saute it up in a little bit. And for our people who want some heat to it, I did find some Korean chili peppers. So I cut those up. Uh, whenever you handle those, you can make sure you wear gloves, but I cut those up earlier. So add those to that too. Get a nice little spice to, the, to your dish. If you, don't want, if you don't want the spice, then just uh, don't put it in. But it's easy to taper it to your uh, liking. And these are nice and pretty much done. So, all right. Now we're going to add our bok choy leaves, the leaves now. We added the stems earlier, so now we just add the bok choy leaves. Get that nice little stir, get that going. All right, these are nice and cooked down. Then we're going to add our caramelized onion to that pot, to that pan. Put that down here, get that nice little mix. Mix it in really well. And then we already added our salt, so we're going to finish it off with a little bit of lime juice. Broccoli and bok choy. Some good. All right, and there we go. Nice and easy. Uh, we'll come back and we'll plate it. All right, welcome back. Now we can plate our little entree here. Get some nice broccoli. We like to call them the goodies in our house. So there's that. Some nice good color there. Alrighty, and then we'll add just a little bit of some peanuts to it and a little bit of lime. And then we'll top it with that cilantro again. And there we are. Take this away. There we are. Okay, I am gonna stop sharing. There we go. <laughs> and I, I, I also just noticed that Cassandra asked for participation too. She's, I guess, attending for part of her support group attendance. So um, I got that on the ask a question feature. If there's other people that wanna put their addresses, emails up there as well, they're welcome to do that. So, and let me know what program you're with so that I know who to send to, what facility. Um, we lost Henry for a second. While Henry is coming back on screen, what I'm going to be doing, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and post. Um, I'm going to pull up the two. Um, Cassandra says sugar snap peas are really good with this as well. Oh, man, that sounds good. I'm always looking for sugar snap pea recipes because I have them in my garden. Um Usually, whenever we have the garden time. And peas are one of those things, too. It's time to start planting, too, here in Missouri. 
anybody else have a garden? I love all this fresh vegetables. All this stuff is just so amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up um, while waiting on Henry. I'm gonna push done answering on that question so that it leaves that. Oh, she says Chi. Okay, yes, I could definitely send that to Chi. And I am going to um, copy the rest, the, um, the rest okay, of the Okay, back. Oh, thanks, Henry. I'm, I'm copying yeah, the, yeah. Um, the bok choy recipe. Okay. okay. And the recipe card and the video. And I'm going to post that here in the chat box on Crowdcast and also Facebook. And here in just a second, I'll pull up the recipe just to kind of have you go over it just a tiny bit here. Okay. Yeah, and I did see someone say like snap peas would be good with that. Oh, those are be really good with, those, with that for sure. Um, always, like I said, with a lot of Asian dishes, a lot of the green onions always usually good um, uh, too. So um, there's a lot of things you can add to it. Um, and as far as you know, someone said said something about uh, you know not being able to flip. I mean, that's that's very easily teachable. <laughs> so it's not a big deal. I want to know how 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 do you do that too? How do you learn? You just well. You just no. So you go, you go forward. You go, you you push your pan forward, like you know, and then and then as it's as everything's going up, you pull it back, and so you can catch it. So it's just basically like you once you pull it up, especially if you have the right pan. You have to have the pan, the the right pan that has that little like um, um, curve. Curve, yeah, exactly. And so that, all the food goes into the curve, comes back up, and then you pull it back, and it fills puts right back in your pan. But I'll be teaching that. At the WLSFA. <laughs> oh, will you? See, there's these yeah, are sure. little tricks. Like it's it's stuff you got to know. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the recipe card now too for that. Okay. Um, okay. And looking. Okay, here we go. Okay. Now I'm going to make it bigger. So this is on Henry's website. The link is in um, the chat box on both Facebook and here. Like that just yes. makes my mouth want to water. And I have to have on Easter, I'm going to have an Easter um, at my house. For yeah. One of the Easter's. And I think I'm going to make this recipe because this looks like a great different kind of recipe that nobody probably has had before at Easter. So I'm going to be trying that. Here is um, the ingredients. Do you want to yeah, do so, that, Henry? Yeah, for sure. So this is, um, you know, caramelized onions are always good. Put them on everything. So typically, I have a lot of caramelized onions. All the, you know, again, just on on hand. They can stay in the fridge for a few weeks, kind of thing. You can put them with like, you know, with 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 Asian food. You could put them in like breakfast food. You could put them in sandwiches, things like that. So caramelized onions are always good. Um, I use I put a pinch of sugar in there. Um, sometimes I'll do like like a coconut sugar or you know stuff like that, but not a lot. And it's just to get the get that browning started going kind of deal. So um, so that's the caramelizing the onions kind of thing. And then everything else is just you know super easy chopped. And part of the part of the deal, part of what I what I teach in um, when I start doing my cooking classes is the cooking tech the cutting techniques. We talked that talked about that a little bit before. That's what's going to streamline your cooking. Once you know how to really get everything chopped up and really you hold your knife and get everything going, it's so much easier and goes so much faster once you know know the right those little techniques for sure. Um, so you cut these, um, you just chop. These are bigger chops just because it's a more more of a main dish. So you just kind of roughly chopped every chop everything. Where the previous menu was, you know, smaller dices just because it was more of a smaller you know, dish. Um, and then. Um, broccoli, love to use broccoli all the time. Uh, the bok choy, you kind of separate. It's kind of like with the uh, asparagus, where you talk, get, chop off the, the tops and then cook the bottoms, and then you throw the ones the tops in at the end, kind of thing. And then you could do an orange pepper. You could do any kind of peppers you want, as far as you know. You could do a sweet pepper. If you like green peppers, I'm not a big green pepper fan, so I don't really use them that much. But they're they, they are flavorful for sure. Um, and then of course you like I love, you know red cabbage um, is super healthy and then the korean peppers i found a great asian market out here in san diego so i go to there and go there and they have thai chilies they have the korean peppers they have the, uh, the serranos and the habaneros they have everything so i, I have the pick of the litter there for as far as peppers go <laughs> um and then the peanuts are optional just because if you're you have peanut allergy peanut allergies or even cilantro some people are allergic to cilantro or have issues with cilantro but you know it's they're all just there for garnish so it's nice and easy for sure 
Um, Henry, a couple questions uh, here. The bok toy. I live in Missouri, and I've not seen that in our in our um, stores here where I live in the Midwest. It could be, and maybe I just don't know where to look for it. Um, yeah. Is there a substitute for that? And also, well, the cream peppers, I guess you said any pepper of your choice. Um, yeah. Those two main questions. And then ginger. I've not used ginger fresh either. How about those three things? Okay. So, okay, let's talk. So, okay, ginger is easy because typically ginger is around, well, like, where they have like the garlic and the shallots. A lot of times they'll have the ginger in that same area kind of thing. Um, and so it just, you know, just they, they come in look like little pieces and then you just got to, you know, peel them and then chop them up kind of thing. So that's easy. Um, as far as the bok choy, the bok choy, typically most grocery stores do have them. You just have to look, know where to find them. They, um, you know, who else has them is um, uh, Costco has a big bag of like this of, of baby bok choy. So you can go to Costco. Um, Whole Foods will have them if you have a Sprouts or like a um, uh, Trader Joe's usually has them. Uh, well, Trader Joe's not so much, but you, usually like your main grocery stores will have them. They, they just have like an Asian section kind of thing. And then if you have a local like Asian market, um, obviously those will have them, have them too. Um, as far as substitutes for bok choy, um, you could, I mean, you can, you can, I mean, this dish is certainly okay without the bok choy if you can't have it. Like sometimes it's just like, you know, I just don't have something, let's just make it happen without it kind of thing. It's not a big deal. Um, but, um, if you want to, so you already got the cabbage in there and you got the broccoli in there. Um, there's not much more that you, that you, that you can, that you'd want, might want to do because I mean, I would said like, if I didn't have cabbage there, I would say, you know, you know, put the cabbage in there. But, um, typically if you don't have, it, it's not a big deal, but I'm sure you can find it for sure. If you really look. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. And, so if there's any other questions and the, the, too. And as far as the, and then also the, with the ginger, like if you, like I usually scrape with a spoon instead of a knife, I just like scrape the the, um, the skin off with a spoon. It's so, so much easier, it comes off easier. And then you can chop it or you can use a, you know, this person says, um, Cassandra says you can use a cheese grater. Um, and the, the thing about cheese grater is that sometimes that you, you start going with it and it's so fine that all, the, all you get is all the, like the, it's all like evaporates, I mean, it's all liquefies. So, so Henry, um, it looks like I don't see any other questions. Um, I love that suggestion, though. I want to try ginger fresh. I is one of my very favorite things whenever I go to like a kind of like an Asian restaurant, a stir fry, a sushi restaurant, any of those things. I love ginger. I can almost make a meal. Yeah. I love ginger so much. <laughs> so the ginger that you get in those places is that fresh ginger or is that pickled ginger or something that they've done to it? And would like, like sushi places you're saying? Yeah. Sushi places or places like stir fry places, that type of thing. Hi Andy. Yeah. Well, it depends. And it, it, you probably get a, uh, both kinds depending on what your dish is. It's, I mean, some dishes have the pickled ginger um, and some places will, I mean, some dishes will have pickled ginger and some places will just have, um, uh, regular like raw ginger and they just cook it up and it's part of the, it's part of the thing. It's kind of like garlic where it's part of the the uh, the uh, the umami of the plate kind of thing where it just goes in there and you just get all the flavor and the texture and that like you know nice and it kind of mixes in kind of thing where the pickled ginger is more of an ingredient as opposed to you know just you know a starter kind of thing like a yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, we're going to skip over now to our next one. Um, I'm going to try sharing it the same way as the last one okay. so that we can Which hopefully hear one? it. Okay, if you can't, please, please let me know. Let me go ahead and copy it. If this one here, guys, is going to be tilapia with cactus. And I'm oh. excited because these are things like I've never, I never even would have thought about trying, you know? Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, oh my God, cactus is so good for everyone. I'm telling you, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, for sure. Let's. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna have to figure out how to find that in the store too. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna share videos. Being in the okay. Midwest, like we're all about beef and I hear you. I understand all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all this fancy stuff I'm not used to. Okay, here we go with the video. Looking. 
It's raining out here. Now we're going to move on to the final dish of our menu. It's going to be the tilapia stew. I'm going to pause it for a second. Refresh your screen if you do not hear Henry or let us know, okay? I'll be listening, watching for that. Stew. So I've already done some of the cut, some of the chopping, the like the garlic and the onions and stuff like that. But here I'm going to finish off. I got to do some of these olives here. Do a few of these here, and then those are good. And then we're going to do just got to chop up some of these tomatoes, make them nice and smaller, so when they get into the stew, they break up easier. And these are some nice tomatoes, nice can of tomatoes, so do all that and then put these back in their bowl with their juices and then we're ready to do some cooking. Okay, so our pot is getting hot and so we're ready to start adding some stuff in there. We're going to add our oil, <laughs> just a little bit, not too much, and let that get a little hotter and while that's... Okay, I'm going to pause it. Andy says, no sound, I watched the replay. I hope it goes Zoom soon. Yeah. Andy, refresh your screen. Just see up at the top, that little refresh button. See if um, that helps. I'm going to go ahead and play again. It, can you hear it, Henry? I can, yes. Okay. No, let me grab my spatula real quick here and get ready for the good stuff. So we're going to add our onion. And our garlic. We have this over here. All right. We're gonna cook this up just a few minutes. Let it get nice and warm. Brown a little bit. Let the garlic get cooking. Let the onions brown just a little bit. And just like a few minutes, two, three minutes, not a big deal. All right. So now what we're gonna add is the new thing we're gonna add is this cactus. Now here's the deal about cactus. Cactus has been a traditional Mexican ingredient. My family's been eating it and cooking it for a long time. But it's interesting, it's, it is considered a super group because it is very high in protein, very high in fiber, and um, really good for bone density and antioxidants. Obviously there's no calorie, no, no carbohydrates in it, so it's a really good um, ingredient to have just kind of on your health journey. So we're gonna add this cactus here. And we're gonna let that cook down for a little bit. And then we're gonna get our next ingredients ready. So got our capers, our olives, and some parsley. And of course our Mexican oregano, which has been, looks like a theme for today, but it's really good. So we're gonna keep that going there. And then our tomatoes. This is gonna be a really quick, really easy recipe. We're gonna put all this in there. We're gonna grab, make it into a big stew, and then we're gonna put the fish in there. It's just gonna like just stew right up into in there. Mm. Smelling good. That reminds me of green peppers, but they're cactus, which are way better than green peppers because I'm not a big green pepper fan. <laughs> That's looking good. Like Put our olives in here. Yeah. And our capers. All right. We're just gonna let this kind of marinate for a while. Then we're gonna add our tomatoes. Right over there. All right, this is looking really good. All right, and lastly, we're gonna add our vegetable stock. Again, we like vegetable stock in our home. So we'll do that. Add some stock here. And this is going to cook up into a nice stew here. And then we add our oregano and our, again our bay leaf. Put that in there. Nice. So in our last recipe with the tortilla soup, we used vegetable stock. And I said you can use beef stock or you can use chicken stock. But in here, since we're using fish, vegetable stock is probably the best answer just because it's the same pro similar pro uh, flavor profile. And But at the same time, any kind of white fish would work. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's like it's, we're using tilapia. You can use like a halibut or a mahi kind of thing. But, you know, really a, a nice flaky white fish is pretty good for this recipe. And this is starting to get... Um, warm, it's nice and hot, and you can see the steam coming up. So at this point, we can add our fish. So 
This fish is very easy to work with. Henry, is that frozen or just is that just thawed? Pop it right in there. It's thawed. Alrighty. And get in there. And then we're just going to let this sit for like probably a hat 30 to 35 minutes. It's just going to sit there and the fish is just going to bake right in here. There's some salt. And like I said, a little bit of cilantro. going to sit for 30 35 minutes it's going to come up this fish is going to be very flaky and flavorful and then we'll we'll come back and we'll play it plate it okay we're back and our stew's finished we're ready to plate that so we're going to take some of the stew and we're going to bring this closer to that. and we're just going to ladle this right in here and get some of the goodies that we like to call in our house the olives and the capers and the cactus nice big tomatoes all right, and then to start the show here is going to be a nice piece of fish. There we go, I had a good one right here. Okay, there we go. There you go, and then top it off with some other, more of that parsley. And there we go, our yummy tilapia soup with our chips and salsa and our side of tortilla soup thanks for watching all these recipes on my, will be on my website chefhealthyhenry.com also on instagram at chefhealthyhenry i really enjoy making these recipes for you guys thanks for watching and let's stay healthy Woo! that was that looks good henry <laughs> that's one of my favorite ones for sure i, oh I really like that gosh. one that lots of so flavor good. very versatile for sure yeah um and uh you know the, the the there's a you know especially when you're mexican like so this is a part of a three-part uh mexican menu that i did so i did like an asian one i did a mexican one um uh, i just finished just did like one with um you know with um with salads so i gotta you know get that one going for you guys too but um and typically you'll see that they have all have their themes so like this one had like the Mexican oregano, which is different from like, you know, uh, Greek oregano or what the oregano we get at the grocery stores because it's, it is a little more uh, rustic, a little more um, that get, get has that Mexican flavor and smell and really adds to that dish. Um, and then the cactus, of course, is is more on, it's, um, you know, it's you know, a lot of Mexican dishes, a lot of, uh, you know, people in Mexico cook with cactus. It's super, super easy. Uh, nutritious and uh, it's very flavorful too for sure henry again question about the cactus so yeah. where would i find that in a grocery store do you think it's in do you think i could find it in the midwest and what does it look like what am i am i looking because i i know the other day whenever i was at walmart i saw yeah. an aloe leaf and i was like oh wow they sell that would it be by that in the produce, something like that? I don't um, know. Okay, so I don't. I mean, I'd have to do some research as far as a regular regular store. Um, I typically go to like a, a Mexican supermarket. They'll have like the cactus comes in like cactus leaves, okay? Or they or they'll have it like in a bag, and they've already got it. They've already chopped off all the the spikes, and they cut it up for you, kind of thing. So they'll, it's already chopped for you. So it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, I think I do have a, um, I might have a video of, of, the, of the leaf and how you kind of take, you know, shave off the spikes and then you cut it up. It's super easy, not a big deal. But I'll think that put that video out there for everybody just as an instructional kind of deal. But um, typically that one's going to be like more of like a supermercado or Mexican market kind of deal. Um, you can see if, um, Possibly um, Whole Foods might have or something like that, one of those high ender ones kind of thing, but uh, that's where I get it. I'm looking right now um, in the Walmart app. You can like look yeah. up and it looks like they have, actually it looks like that they actually have it in a can. It says marinated tender cactus and they have uh, Napolto's tender cactus uh -huh. in a jar, like canned. You probably can't yeah, no Paul. Yeah, it's, yeah. What's it called? It's called no, no Paul. Could you Mexico. use something yeah. that's canned, that type of thing? Yeah, you can. Fresh. 
Yeah, you can do. I mean, I prefer fresh. Obviously, I prefer everything fresh. But if you can do, if you can find it in in a can, that's okay too. Just drain it, um, and then you know, straight drain it, and then you can add it to your soups for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while you're sharing that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the recipe card here real quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, and is there anything you could substitute with that? Uh, with cactus, um, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, with this, I mean, this is another one of those things where you can just, okay, so here's the picture. <laughs> oh. So I, I do my editing and I do it, take all my pictures myself. So I'm super excited. That's one of the things I've never learned how to do. I just recently learned, learned how to do all that stuff. So I'm probably more, most proud of my editing and my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just cause I learned, I've learned a lot for sure. So, um. But this is more of a like a kind of a rustic like Mexican dish. Um, you, mm -hmm. I mean, I love the 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 you know the rusticness of the capers and the green olives in there. Um, the cactus is obviously really nice. Um, and then the tomatoes. I like to get quality tomatoes. Um, for, you know, I mean, you might have to you know pay up an extra fifty cents for a good can of tomatoes, but it does make a difference. And the thing is that if you especially with spring and summer coming out, if you can get like you know, if you could get like, go to the farmer's market and get like fresh tomatoes and just dice those up yourself, that's that's the best. That's even better just because it's, they're fresh. Um, and uh, especially at the farmer's market, or you can get them from, um, you know, your local grocery store, whichever, like, you know, the healthiest one you can find or whatever, they'll have the better selection of the, uh, of tomatoes for sure. Um, we talked about Mexican oregano. Um, and everything else just is it, these are easy recipes. A lot of these recipes I do are super easy. You can do it on a Tuesday night, but then I have on my website and on I mean, yeah, and on you know YouTube some more intricate ones where I can do you can do like the stuff you know you know turkey things and all that kind of thing. So yeah, it just is kind of like I'm gonna stop sharing. It's just kind of this sounds like just such a good base for just a good base for soup, like a good really nice vegetable. Yeah, it's a good base. You can, yeah, you can add your, you can add whatever uh, protein you want in, in there. Um, you can add, you know, like a, you can do, I mean, this is like as a Mexican flair, so you're not going to want to, may not want to do the tofu thing, but you can do um, like any type of different fish, you know, a good piece of, uh, you know, chicken, like chicken thighs, again, would be good, really good in that. Um, but something like that more, not something so meaty, like, like some, oh, you could do like, um, like, uh, like a, like a, a pulled pork kind of thing that could possibly do that, but it's not, you don't want to flavor first and then put it in there because it's going to change everything around. Just want to get some pulled pork that's not so flavored and just throw it in, put it in there and for sure, yeah. Uh, but this is a good base. These, the, uh, like I said, I've been doing a lot of soups and salads, soups and stews just because it's been winter and now we're, I'm switching into more salads kind of deal. So I like to do more um, the seasonal stuff. Yeah. And I think too soon, soon, as I mentioned before, soon the gardens will be coming in. I don't know what it's like there in California. You guys probably are able to raise food pretty much all year. But <laughs> here in good old Missouri, it's just now starting to be able to start putting out gardens, I'd say, probably within. I've put out a few things, but really you have to be so careful with frost. We still are getting frost. And then. Yeah. So many of these things that you have in your recipes i mean the fresh tomatoes the fresh um all the seasonings like cilantro you know garlic um the bay leaves the yeah i'm the all the all those things you know you guys you can grow on your own i actually have an herb garden that i have raised containers and i save them i dry them i hang them up and and dry them out and then i use them all year round um, yeah, I love fresh herbs. I don't know if you like using now cilantro is one of those things not as good dried. I haven't found cilantro. I like dried. I just like it fresh, but yeah, you can always for find sure. it fresh. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I, I do like to do a lot of fresh stuff. I like to keep it keep it healthy, obviously bariatric friendly and keep it, you know, you know, I, I do try to tend, I try to my recipes are things that people can access all over the country, all over the world kind of thing. But sometimes you get the, like the cactus where it's a little harder to find, but yeah, you could do it the can thing. I'll be doing um, my, uh, on my website, I have a recipe for like a, a tostada with some squash blossom in there. It's got the actual flower, uh, the actual flower, like, you know, a garden flower that you put on top of it. It's mm -hmm. really good. Um, those are not, those are coming back in the season. Once they do that, I'll get that video up. But my point is that 
those come into can too, like squash blossoms. They're they're from the like the squash, like the green squash. They they have a flower that they blossom too, and so mm. you can get that from the can too. Obviously, you know, getting fresh is best, but you can get those from cans too for sure. So fun! I love I love that you're having. What is your the ethnic background of these dishes? What would you say? Like, what is most of what you cook? What is your um, influence from that you have well, because it's not it's different from what i'm used to seeing yeah so my thing is is that so i went to culinary school 20 years ago and so i've been cooking for a long time and i've been experimenting for a long time now obviously the last probably the 15 years before you know when i first started it was a lot of, like my my training was more on the french side so i was doing a lot of like the creams and the butters and all that kind of thing so try to stay away from that these days but these days um, I, I, it's like I said, I like to do seasonal stuff. So, um, and I, and love, love to just keep everything international. Like I'll do like, you know, the Asian menu, I'll do the Mexican menu. I'm going to be doing some Mediterranean stuff. Um, and then just, and then a lot of it is my, so my family's pescatarian. So we eat a lot of fish and vegetables, obviously nutrient dense vegetables. Um, and then I'll throw in meat for myself kind of thing. So a lot of that is, is from experience and from my, you know, travels and things like that, where I can find little things like the cactus or find the, you know, the little, the, just like the Korean peppers and things like that, just experimenting and whatever. And like I said, I, you know, even my daughter, like I said, when, when she was little, we would cook together and she, you know, teaching her from a young age, how to be open to all kinds of different ethnicities and different types of foods and different types of cuisines, um, you know, keeps their palate, as wide open as possible so they don't stay with the with the mac and cheese and the hot dogs kind of thing they can sit down with you at 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 your home sit down with you at a restaurant and not just eat rice all the time they can they'll actually have a, a good palate and then when they get older they can feed themselves they can shop they can feed themselves and they don't have to like go to taco bell all the time or go to like you're going to college and go to dorm all you know go to the you know the cafeteria all the time they can be home and just cook it for themselves and yeah. that you brought up a good a good point about teaching our kids and their food preferences a lot of times come from what they're used to eating too you know you have to sometimes reintroduce and reintroduce things to to get them to try things and, and that type of thing but um i love that because it is important you know like if we want our kids to grow up to be healthy too you know it's important yeah. to, to them um I have, it looks like we have, um, and my daughter's on the call. So hello, Madison. Oh, nice. <laughs> she, she probably fixes more healthier foods than I do. She's always fixing all kinds of healthy stuff. Um, yeah, I bet she does. I got to meet Madison before. She is with our ProCare Health team too. So maybe some of you guys will get to meet her at some point. Yeah, I love her. She's so awesome for sure. <laughs> um, what I'm going to do is share one more thing. Henry, I want to share... I want to uh, share your information again okay. on how to get a hold of you. For so sure. I'm going to copy it. I have it here on my outline. I'm going to just kind of copy your YouTube channel, your Instagram page, and your website. And I'm going to post those in the chat box. How to get a hold of okay. you. Yeah. Um, for more information, or if you're deciding that you want to do a class with Henry, you want to do something with him. Please reach yeah, out. Yeah, if you have any questions, if you have like substitute questions or cooking questions or techniques or whatever, definitely let me know. I'm always open to helping people because that's, I mean, ever since I had my surgery and I, you know, kind of lost my, lost all my weight and really got on this track of like, you know, a new lifestyle, whatever. My purpose now is to help everybody else out there to, you know, stay on there, stay on track too, because that uh, weight regain is, is so, it's, it just seems so hard. <laughs> Henry, so, how much have you lost total? So I'm down 142 pounds. Um, and so now I, I feel like I'm in the, the maintenance slash now I got to work at it kind of things, you know. Um, but you know, I, I still go out and I run my stairs and I still, you know, eat good and I, you know, hit the weight room and stuff like that. So, um, you know, obviously life is so much better these days and I'm doing a lot of traveling, going to people's homes, going to a lot of, you know, conferences and, um, just getting out there and, you know, anybody want me to, if anybody wants me to come to their home and help them cook or just like do a little cooking class with them. They, we could do it with your family. 
we could do with you know a bunch of women we could do with a bunch of guys we could do couples whatever it is you know let's let's like we can put it together um i'm i'm okay with just cooking with one person or like 20 people i'm okay either way i'm just i'm just love i just love to cook and love to spread the cooking with everybody else fine Henry's going to be coming to, hopefully going to be coming to Missouri in yes. later this year. And we might be doing a class. You know what? It might be even fun to invite other people. We'll have to see. We'll have to check into yeah. that. Remember, we were going to talk about that. Um, one other thing I just want to do is give a shout out at the end of these. I'd like to do a shout out to our sponsor. And so I'm going to kind of share my screen real quick. We have one, some new products coming out. And so nice. I'm going to, yes, I'm excited. We're going to, I'm going to share my entire screen. I'm going to go down to my photos. And so my question, I kind of post question. So besides the vitamins and anti-inflammatory properties in ProCare Health's new wound support, that's a product I'm going to be showing you here. How does this supplement help with accelerated skin regeneration? So it also helps with that. Um, great product to use, like if you're fresh post-op or maybe at some point you're just wanting to make sure that your skin stays kind of rejuvenated and more healthy. Um, so this is some of the, the benefits, um, high, high hyaluronic, I hope I'm saying this right, acid supports cell migration. Um, it has a grapeseed extract in it, which helps with connective tissue. Um, Mornga supports all cell migration to the skin. Glus glucamine stimulates, these are long words, guys, hyalur hyaluronic <laughs> acid synthesis. Um, and I even made this help make this slide. So I don't know why I did this to myself. Um, just lots of good <laughs> stuff in here. Collagen um, helps support collagen development and uh, granulation of tissue. So check that out on our website. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to show you where to find it here real quick on the ProCare site. Um, let's share my whole screen again, I think. And we are going to go to entire screen and I'll just type in and show you the link. Um, so if you go to www.procarenow.com, um, you can see it kind of populates easily on mine because I'm there all the time. Under products, this first one under vitamins and minerals. And if you kind of go down to the bottom of the screen, because it's on page two, you go to next. And guys, our website is getting ready to change. So this may be a little different if you're watching um, a later version of our video. Here's some, a lot of our newer products are listed on this page. Wound support is actually the last one here. And I'm going to click options. Um, you can do deliver every month or one-time purchase. And there's also underneath here a whole, dis a whole different description. Kind of lists all the benefits um, along with supplemental facts. If you're kind of wondering what all's in this product, gives a good list of that. So um, I will copy this link. And I will share it here in just a second. Also, guys, if you've never tried ProCare, you can let us know. Get a free sample. There's um, just fill out a short little form here and um, let us know. We'd be happy to send you one. So I got that. I'll put the link here into the chat box. And I think that's everything I had. Um, Henry says, um, it says do an XM radio podcast. Hey, we are we are moving to podcast in May when we start a new format. We are going to be doing these as podcast. They'll be nice. live, but they'll also be recorded and they will be on podcast form. So Donnie, yes, they will be um, added to all the major streaming services. Um, I have some people helping me with that. So we'll be doing a live. There'll be a replay on our YouTube channel and then they'll be on all the, the podcasts. Thank you for bringing that up. I didn't even think about saying that. And Henry says next month I'll be launching online cooking classes. So be looking for that. Yes. Um, I'm going to type the link for the new wound support on our ProCare Facebook page. And I just want to say thank you all for being here. Thanks for staying with us. This one went a little longer, but it's all good. And um, we're just going to say bye to everybody. If you have any questions, email me. Anybody asking for attendance on this forum, I will be sending that to you, to your program. So um, I'm going to say goodbye for now and have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.